Apple just held an event announcing their new MacBook Pros and all their M3 chips. And then there was this surprise at the end that the whole event was shot on iPhone. So I was actually attending the event in person, watching it on a huge 4K screen, and I did not detect that this was an iPhone video at all. Afterwards, they released this behind the scenes video so we can figure out how did they actually achieve on an iPhone what they usually shoot with an Aerie Alexa. Let's start with the title screen because we get a pretty good view of how they are rigging the iPhone here. You can see that it's inside of a cage. This cage is made by Beast Grip. And then you can see all around it, there's this crazy other stuff. This is a big crane. And I kind of want to get to an overall point here that there was a lot of arguments going around, especially on Twitter and threads about Apple saying that this was shot on iPhone is somewhat misleading because obviously it needed all this extra gear to make it look as professional as it did. But I think Apple releasing this behind the scenes lets us get some insight into what makes something cinematic. And you know what, a lot of it is not the camera. But first of all, taking a closer look at the camera, something that's a key ingredient here is you can see there is a USB-C out. This is what makes the iPhone 15 look different. This is why you couldn't shoot an Apple Keynote on the iPhone 14. I talked about it a lot in my iPhone 15 review that Apple Log and ProRes are what open up all these possibilities. It wasn't available before and it strips away a lot of that iPhone sharpening where it kind of looks too contrasty and a little synthetic. Log profiles are an industry standard way of recovering more dynamic range and more color information from an image. It's kind of similar to when you shoot raw on a stills photo. You just have a lot more flexibility in how you work with it afterwards. And very importantly, Log is a known color profile. So if you plug it into something like DaVinci Resolve, you can just treat it like you treat Aria Alexa or Red or Sony footage and have it all match. So that's why when we see shots like this, they don't stand out. It looks like a standard Apple commercial because they're kind of treating it the same way as they treat all their other Apple events. If we look at the mounting the phone here, you can actually see behind the rig, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on. A lot of this is power distribution. So this is an Anton Bauer battery pack. We saw these earlier, and this is just sending out electricity to things like the splitters so that the iPhone can send the signal to other monitors on set. You can see that these are all receiving the exact same signal. The USB signal on the iPhone can be split in a ton of different ways. It's really versatile, but it does need more power than just the phone can provide. So that's when you need external batteries. Here's a clip where we actually see how it's mounted in the USB-C. There's a L mount adapter going into a Thunderbolt cable. If you wanna set something like this up at home, make sure that your cable can support enough throughput, both in terms of data and power to support this kind of setup. Here's a view of the back of the camera. Where you can see one of the large battery packs that's hooked directly up to a wireless transmitter. That's what these antennas are for. And then this is a different battery over here. So they're probably individually running each component of the rig. And then all of these metal pieces, these are all counterweights. Cause typically a cinema camera is so heavy that they're not used to mounting a tiny little phone on it. So they need to balance the weight on this big crane. A lot of people are saying normal shooters can't achieve this look without all of the gear. So let's talk about like, what is some of this gear doing? This shot's an interesting example because it's just showing a standard living room, but it's kind of idealized, right? Like it's in an Apple universe where everything is perfectly lit. They've got some basic lamps in the background, which create little pools of light and shape the room, but they're usually not bright enough to actually light the room or the people. So there's probably a big diffusion sheet with powerful lights behind it. That's really what's lighting the scene. You can actually achieve that with a YouTuber type budget. Just get any bright LED light and put it behind a big piece of diffusion and you can get something not that far off from what we're seeing here. What's really essential is that you're balancing it so you can see outside they are lighting the walls outside the window here just so that it is visible. You can see this example here where their lights are clearly on dimmers. So this is actually something that is available even on standard like Aperture or NAND lights. You can hook them up to a DMX system or just to your iPad or iPhone and have them dim on cue. A lot of this stuff is about having an organized team that can help you out and knows what they're doing. So if you want some of this controlled look, you probably couldn't build a set to the same level as Apple, but you could manipulate the lighting in kind of similar ways without incredible budgets. A lot of home studio gear could actually get you pretty close to some of this. Okay, but what you probably can't achieve is lighting huge areas like this. Giant lights like this, like airy sky panels or whatever we have, these are very expensive and it's just hard to get enough power to light up an outdoor environment, especially at night. And you can see that over Tim's head here, they're floating a big cloud to just give a lot of lift to all this light down below. All of this stuff is what makes it super expensive lighting really large areas 
at nighttime, that is hard to do. But there is a secret ingredient here that we all have access to, and that is that they're using the new Blackmagic camera app. This is actually a free download and gives you complete manual control over the iPhone. You can see it again here, this is setting Apple log inside of Blackmagic. If you're interested in filmmaking on the iPhone, this really is a must download. You can see it's just being used everywhere. And this gives you just manual control so that the uh, ISO, the white balance, the tint, the shutter angle, all of this can be locked so it's consistent from shot to shot and you maintain full control over it. It's also interesting that every time that they show which lens is being used, it's the 24 millimeter, which is the main 1X lens on the iPhone. People have asked me if I think they're using external lenses, like absolutely not. These are definitely all using that one lens. There's no ultra wide that I see here. Big cool lenses stuff. bolted to the front of iPhones and stuff like that, yeah. And plus the 3X or the 5X lens, they're not quite at the same level as that main camera. And looking back at the event in hindsight, the only shots that really give away that it's iPhone are ones like this this because the background is still sharp. Usually if they were shooting this on the Alexa, the background would always be blurry, but you just can't really do that with an iPhone. This is why they're definitely not adding lenses. And adding lenses on an iPhone doesn't give you better image quality. All it could do is maybe blur out the background a bit or give you a different field of view, but you'll never get a better image because the light is still going through the phone's built-in cameras, even if you had another lens on top. This stack of hard drives here, this is how they're actually recording it. These are all Lacey drives. You're definitely gonna need something that's fast enough to keep up with both the read and write speeds, otherwise you could have dropped frames. Not every drive is fast enough, so you're gonna wanna make sure you test the ones that you're using before you go and shoot a bigger job. There's a few different gimbals we see being used throughout. This one is the R2 from DJI Ronin. That one's a bit more expensive, but some of these are actually more or less consumer drones. Like this is the RS3, also from DJI. I have this, it's not that expensive. And then in terms of post production, we can see in the background here, this is all Adobe Premiere interface. Interesting that it wasn't edited in Final Cut Pro, which I use Final Cut, so it's kind of disappointing not to see more of that support. And then the color grading, not surprisingly, is being done in DaVinci Resolve, which works incredibly well on a Mac. It's a good way to showcase that ability. If you import Apple Log into Final Cut Pro, it'll add contrast back into it so that it just looks like a normal iPhone clip, like the regular contrast, looks like a cell phone video. But if you use a properly calibrated LUT, and I've created a few, there's a link in the description to download them, you can get something much closer to what we're seeing in this video. Color grading takes a lot of skill, but the most important step is that transform from log to full rec 709, which is the contrasty look that you see on screen. As long as you're using the correct transform there, the correct LUT, it can look pretty great right out of the box. So I've tried to make one that looks pretty great. You can download it. In the end, what makes the Apple event look so good isn't the camera that it's being captured on. Whether it was an Alexa or Red or a Sony, it would still look great because there's a talented team of cinematographers, VFX artists, colorists, camera operators, just all these people that know how to make a video look good. So even if you don't have access to the same cast and crew as Apple does, you can make your iPhone videos look commercial quality or at least good enough to run a beautiful YouTube channel. I've got some videos showing you how to do it. So subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.